Thank you for calling. This is Lori. How may I help you? Okay, before scheduling your appointment, I have some questions that will help us to determine if you're a walk-aid candidate. Pre-screening is important in determining whether or not a patient is a candidate for a walk-aid evaluation. A trained member of the office staff should use the walk-aid pre-screening questionnaire to qualify a patient and then schedule the appropriate office visit. The ability to walk independently with or without an assistive device is required. If the patient has an implantable device, uncontrolled seizures, or blood clots, they should not be evaluated for the walk-aid without medical clearance from their physician. Pregnant patients should not be scheduled. Patients having any other considerations should be discussed with the walk-aid specialist before scheduling. If the pre-screening identifies a good walk-aid candidate without contraindications, schedule a one-hour walk-aid evaluation. The patient must bring a physician prescription for the walk-aid system at the time of the appointment. Please be careful not to deter the interest of anyone inquiring about the walk-aid by quoting a price over the phone. It is much more effective to have financial discussions in person after the trial has taken place. Some insurers cover the walk-aid and others do not. In the event that insurance denies coverage for this technology, support should be offered to help patients identify alternate financing options. The first step is to determine whether or not the technology is appropriate for the patient. The evaluation may be offered at no cost. You may also consider offering a low-cost, short-term home trial following a successful walk-aid evaluation. Okay, thank you. Based on your answers, you may be a walk-aid candidate. I understand you have questions about coverage. Coverage for the walk-aid varies. We will fully research your insurance and make sure there's a clear understanding of your coverage prior to final delivery. Alrighty, I understand. Before concerning yourself with coverage, let's determine if the walk-aid is appropriate for you and that it will help you achieve your treatment goals. When would you be available for an evaluation? When the patient arrives at the clinic for evaluation, use the walk-aid evaluation packet to document the initial evaluation findings. Complete the clinical evaluation. Assess range of motion, gross muscle strength, spasticity, and gait both with and without the current assistive device. Make note of the patient's diagnosis, any contraindications, and the expected prognosis as it relates to the walk-aid. Viability of the peroneal nerve must be identified. The mini-stim peripheral nerve stimulator can be used, although it is not recommended for pediatric patients. Always prepare the user for the testing procedure by providing a thorough explanation of the process and ask for continuous feedback during the procedure. The user should be comfortably seated, facing front, with the affected leg resting on a low stool, bolster, or the floor. The leg should be relatively extended with slight knee flexion to simulate the position of the leg at terminal stance during walking when stimulation will be initiated. The heel should be supported but not fixed with the foot close to a neutral alignment. Clean the skin in the area around the head of the fibula with water and wipe dry. Failure to adequately prepare the skin may cause improper contact and provide less than ideal stimulation. Identify the head of the fibula. The common perineal nerve runs posterior and distal to the head of the fibula, where it splits into its deep and superficial branches. Position yourself next to the patient so that you can see and address this entire area during testing. Visualize the intersection of two lines drawn vertically behind and horizontally below the head of the fibula. This is a good starting point to test the viability of the common perineal nerve. Wet the area around the head of the fibula generously with water. Turn on the mini stim, press 50 hertz and twitch. The orange light indicates that the mini stim is powered on. Set the intensity dial to zero. As you increase the intensity, the red light will begin to flash when a closed circuit is completed. The stimulation enters the tissues, then returns to the device. You will not see a muscle contraction or foot movement in response to the stimulation if the red light is not flashing. Position the mini stim against the leg so that the black base silver node is posterior and the red base silver node is anterior. 
the current runs from the active black node to the inactive red node. Remember, black to the back, red ahead. Hold the mini stim firmly to the leg, keeping it perpendicular to the leg at all times. Gradually turn up the intensity until the desired muscle contraction and foot motion are observed. You may place one hand on the lower leg to feel the contraction of the peroneus longus and tibialis anterior muscles. The response to stimulation is immediate if the active node is positioned over the nerve motor point. If the desired response of dorsiflexion is not elicited, try increasing the intensity further. Still no immediate response? Then slowly slide the mini stim nodes across the skin without losing contact. Moving the stimulation inferior and anterior should promote dorsiflexion. Moving the stimulation superior and posterior should promote eversion. Keep in mind that although we can anticipate responses based on typical anatomy, each person's body is unique. The desired functional foot lift may be elicited at any site surrounding the fibular head, depending on where the motor points of the perineal nerves exist. An appropriate muscle contraction that lifts the foot indicates the patient may be a candidate for the walk-aid system. You can proceed to electroplacement.